Hello everybody, I am the Fluffy Game Dev. On this channel I talk about pretty much anything related to game development. Today I'll be talking about Unity events and why you should consider using them. As usual, all the code I produce is available on my GitHub. Feel free to use it as much as you want, I left a link in the description. Now before I begin, you may wonder why I am doing this video. The reason is that I use Unity events a lot in my projects and videos. And while I assume many of you already know how to use them, I felt it was fitting to make a video on the subject just in case. So do not worry, I do plan to make a part 2 to my inventory system video, and I have many other ideas in store. Anyway, let's get started with Unity events. Now first of all, what are Unity events? If you don't know, well, you may have already come across some without even knowing. Probably the most famous example you'll find is in the Unity button. As you can see here in the inspector, there's an on-click event. This is precisely what a Unity event is. And as you can see, we can bind a Unity object and a function to that event. What that means is that whenever the player clicks on the button, this function will be executed for the specified object. For example, in this case, I change the color of a capsule when I click on the button. To achieve a similar result on your own components, all you need to do is use the Unity Engine.Events namespace and have a serialized Unity event in your component. And with just that code, you'll notice that the event is now visible in the inspector. So you can now plug a game object or a scriptable object to the event and call any of its public methods or change any of its public attributes and properties. However, right now, this code is useless since the event is never triggered. To trigger the event, we must call our event's name .invoke. For this example, let's invoke the event on the onMouseDown method. That way, if the player clicks on the object holding the component, the event will be triggered. Finally, I'd like to add that it's possible to specify arguments to Unity events. If you do so, it will show only the methods that have the same arguments in the inspector. And of course, you will have to call the event invocation with those arguments too. So now you know what Unity events are, but why should you care about them? How can they be used? Well, the main goal of Unity events is that you can create some extremely generic components by setting the effect of events directly in the inspector. In other words, there's almost no need for any code to handle the effect of an event. For example, the button component is quite powerful on its own. With no code whatsoever, a simple click on a button can cause a vast array of possibilities ranging from the enabling of objects to the triggering of animations. For those of you who know of design patterns, Unity events are basically a data-driven combination of the observer and the command patterns. This can be extremely powerful. Now let's have a look at a real-life example. For the 47th edition of the Ludum Dare game jam, I had to code some kind of a password-protected lock. That lock could take multiple forms like a keypad or a bunch of colored buttons on a table, and finding the right password could have various effects such as open a door or reset a countdown. To implement that lock, let's create a new component and call it password lock. In that component we'll have two strings, one for the current password attempt and one for the expected password. By comparing both those strings we can know if the player has given the right password. The component will also have two Unity events. One if the password is correct, and one if the password attempt has changed. Notice that the second event has a string argument. That argument will serve to pass the password attempt text. To be honest, there should also be an event for when the password is incorrect. But to keep this example as concise as possible, I didn't implement it here. Anyway, in addition to those attributes, I also have two public functions one to add some text to the password attempt, and another to reset the attempt. Whenever the attempt is modified, we also invoke the onCurrent password change event. This can serve to display in some UI the entered text. And when we add some text to the attempt, we then check if the player has given the right password. If it is, we invoke the unpassword correct event. As I mentioned, both the functions to add or reset the text are public. So that means they can be called from anywhere, including from, surprise, a Unity event. 
This is especially convenient because that way we can enter the password however we please, be it via regular UI buttons or some pressure plates in a level. For our example, I put the password lock component on a simple cube. This cube has a canvas as a child which itself has a text field to display the current password attempt and some buttons to enter a numeric password. On the onClick event of the buttons, I call the enter password text function with a single digit corresponding to the button. So if I press on 1 it will enter 1 and if I press on 5 it will enter 5. To update the attempt display, I plug the text field's text property to the password locks on current password changed event. And finally, I added a door with a bunch of animations. So when the player enters the right password, we set its animation parameter to true. That way, it will cause the door to open. Now, let's test this out. If I enter a random password, nothing happens. So far, so good. But if I enter the right password, 4975, the door opens. So that means everything works as intended. This is all regarding Unity events. I hope this video has taught you at least a thing or two. Better yet, I hope I have convinced you of how Unity events can be useful. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!